Hello. Hello. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hi. Hi. We're live. (laughs) Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of the re-release of Eye of the Storm. Uh Uh-oh. I think we broke. There we go. Okay. I am with Viper and McIntyre is to the left of me and Viper's below us. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, hello. (laughs) Um, We're going to be talking about, um, I know Eye of the Storm originally, um, we we started it off at um, basic gameplay knowledge um, and kind of went up from there, but we're just going to start from the beginning again. We're going to talk to you about the new XP changes, how to, um, how to uh, soak XP, how to um, capitalize on that XP and where to take it for end game. Um, and we're also going to talk about, you know, the new laning changes with all of the catapults and, and what that does for you. Um, and I don't fully, you know, 100% understand it myself. That's why I have these guys or these guys. There we go. That works. <laughs> <laughs> Cause you're different on my discord than you are. Um, but yeah, so, um, Let's get started, I guess. Let's get this this rolling over here. I know, right? Thank you guys so. Thank you guys so much for patiently waiting. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're live now, um, and I hope it it stays good for now. (laughs) What were you gonna say, Max? I was gonna say uh, we can talk about what happened. Hmm. That obviously people know. He was censored. (laughs) (laughs) You bleeped. Okay, so we can, I guess we could just talk about what happened, next, right? Like, uh, where did it change? How, what, what happened with, I don't know if, if everyone knows that, maybe, maybe they do already, but mm. we can kind of bring that up. Yeah. So we, we, yeah, we're gonna, um, kind of start off with, you know, um, what the, what the XP is, how to capitalize on the laning, when to rotate, what heroes are best. Um, for XP soak, if one question I have, which I'll bring up later, is if how important are solo laners now? Um, so there's a lot of good things that we're going to talk about throughout this entire segment. Um, but I wanted to start off with uh, the types of battlegrounds. If you guys are new to the game, um, if you guys are new to MOBAs in general, um, the objective is to push down the lanes and kill the enemy's core. It seems very simple, but you know what? Um, what we kind of established in the previous Eye of the Storm episodes is that um, Hots is easy to learn, hard the master. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, isn't that the truth? I know, right? What we have is two lane and three lane uh, maps. Two lane maps are Braxis, Battlefield of Eternity, and Haunted Mines, which we. What is Haunted Mines? I don't know what that Ooh, is. Don't know her. <laughs> <laughs> and then the three lane maps are Alt Dark Pass, Garden of Terror, Hanamura, Volskaya, Towers of Doom, Infernal Shrines, Tomb of the Spider Queen, Sky Temple, Black Hearts Bay, Dragonshire. Did I have Dragonshire twice? No, I don't. Uh, Cursed Hollow and Warhead Junction. Um, and you guys are looking at the overlay. If you guys want to chime in at any time, you guys are more than welcome to. Um, yeah. But for HOTS, the XP is despite, um, or different from League or any other MOBA, the XP is shared throughout the entire team. Um, Okay, anybody else want to I was going to say, so jumping back a little bit, talk about like the difference between two lane and three lane, I think it's kind of cool. Something Mm -hmm. uh, I think is important, something that um, is interesting now, especially after the changes experience. Um, because uh, XP is shared by your team, you have to manage each of the experience, right? Uh, experience again, which I think you were about to talk about. Soaking minions and taking structure. You get passive XP as well, and for a little down. But with two Here, lanes, wait, Mac, I'm going to, McIntyre, I'm going to stop you for one second because you're cutting out. Is he cutting out for you, Viper, too? Yeah. A little it's, bit. Put your sensitivity you down super low. You? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah, perfect. Is this way better? Much better. Yeah, for I now. Bring it closer to you. Okay. Yeah. If it, if it works better now, I think we're good. 
Yeah, because okay. you were getting like it was like you were censored. Okay, I'm, yeah. I might need to mess with my Discord a bit, but uh, if it's You're better, good. no, that's good. All right. So I was essentially saying because XP comes from minions, um, it's interesting with two lane maps, it's much easier to manage those minions. Um, it only requires mm -hmm. two people, right? So mm -hmm. three players can do whatever uh, camps or trying to gank heroes. Uh, and, and with three lane maps, you have to have three players soaking each. I think that that's something interesting. Uh, now that experience is so important through soaking uh, with changes, uh, kind of the structural gain from XP that you get from killing towers. So I, I think that was a point that I just wanted to bring up uh, mm -hmm. that a lot of people I think are looking over. Uh, two lane maps are more fun, I guess is my mm. point now that yeah. you get to fight more, you get to fight over the objectives a lot easier, and you don't have to worry so much about all the experience that you're missing. Um, mm -hmm. there's, not that, there's not as many right i mean the one thing that i've noticed at least playing in games now that there is actually like you said more of a rotation like on braxis i've actually seen a significant increase in somebody literally coming to the lane to try and take you out that way you were losing that advantage because even getting towers now the xp is cut in half from towers yep. and they're completely gone from structures which sometimes when it comes to objectives you want to try and get that and then leave just get that little bonus but now you know, even with like a uh, cursed hollow, getting the getting the structure uh, damage with the, the uh, siege camp isn't as a high as a priority as it used to be. You know, you can still do it, but you're not getting that super advantage by stalling the objective, which kind of makes obviously you know specialists that are slowly getting eliminated are less of that kind of a, a threat for the most part. You know. Yeah, you said you say almost be like you could trade a fort for mm -hmm. uh, an objective right and, and it's okay because the experience kind of evens itself out but now that's not as apparent it doesn't mm -hmm. show as quickly i guess um and for that reason you know the the two lane maps are, are again they're, they're much more active because you're not so hyper focused on the soak because it's much easier to obtain. so mm -hmm. it, is, it is interesting when you look at you know battlefield of Eternity. i think you have hanamura listed as a three lane um but they've re remade it to Two lane, or it started. Oh yeah, that's right. They did. It is now a two lane. So, in, like I, I say this because I actually think currently Hanamura is the best map in this game. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's the most fun because the camps give experience with the changes. You, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're fighting over the recon camps that give experience in the middle of the map. There's a turret camp and the samurai camp spawning every like a minute and a half. I think so. It's just constant. You know, mini boss. Constant, yeah, constant objectives, constant mm -hmm. things for the three man to do. Um. Yeah, it's probably my favorite map in the in the in the bar. Yeah, the changes to that map really made it a little more fun and strategic than just mindless at you know at the point. But so what I, what I want to bring up um, is that so what what Mac and Vipe you're talking about is that previous to the for the past the patch that just rolled out, um, killing forts and structures gave your team experience. So if you could get an early fort or an, or an early tower, um, you would gain a lot more XP than your opponents. Um, with the newest patch change, now those forts do not, forts and towers and structures do not give you XP. So what does that change for the lazing phase? Like I know laning, or lazing, laning phase. Is laning early game I know it's still important to get that XP, you know, over advantage over your enemy team. But now that forts um, so you don't get a give pass, XP, you get, you get a passive XP. So, so when you take a fort now, you you get an increase, twenty percent increase in your passive XP. So it's not immediate. Um, you know, if you're nine and a half and you take a fort in the Staggered. past, you're ten. You're just ten. You you get a big chunk. Now right. the XP comes in slowly. So the laning phase is more important because it gets you to kind of that point where if you take a fort, you know, you can get an advantage just by soaking better than the other team. Um, the other right. team can't take your fort mid and lose a bunch of soak in the other lanes and just be up and be get 10 before you, right? That, that no longer is going to happen. Um, if each team is soaking, same, each team will reach 10 at the time um it, it, now, it's, it, it's interesting go ahead is um i forgot what i was gonna say 
I was going to ask you a question about laning. Now, okay, is is our comebacks even more, you know, 6.5 out of 10 comeback mechanics. Comebacks are really good in this game. Mm. Is it a lot without the with the changes, is it easier to come back now? Uh, is it easier to steamroll your team or get steamrolled? Like is it is it balanced now in terms of late game versus early? Like how like cuz you know how like in and on some maps once you get that xp it's it's sometimes hard to come back unless you get you strategically bound your team together and get picks mm -hmm. and play smart late game because that's when the the gameplay knowledge really comes in i feel mm -hmm. late game when you are down in that xp and you need to come back that's when that gameplay knowledge kicks in so how does that play out now with the xp changes in in my opinion, I've noticed that the they're for they're kind of pushing more because Heroes of Storm has always been a team based game. Mm -hmm. They want team fights. They're kind of more so making that a priority. So getting those late game team wipes or picks could be a good comeback for your team because it gives you that XP lead that you needed or you were lacking. Um, but when it comes to someone who's already ahead, that doesn't necessarily mean the enemy team that they want against is. In a, in a bad spot because now with the catapult changes if you get a team wipe you might need to respond more to something that you used to not be able to have to back in the day because gotcha. you could they'll have a four lane caddy pushing in one lane with only one fort down you know so it kind of mm -hmm. in my perspective it balances it out but i kind of see your concern about how much more of a steamroll can happen you know with the yeah. lack of the lack of ability to gain xp quickly you know, because you're more yeah. on a time frame now. You're more staggered. They're it's more controlled than it used to yeah. be. You know. Yeah, and I I think going on to that point, what what's interesting about these changes and and what I've noticed is that, um, the big thing that it really does is it doesn't necessarily help teams that get behind, right? Just like before, if you were two levels behind, it's very hard to come back, and you do have to rally the team and look for that team wipe or get that kill and that pick and whatnot. Um. You know, those stats still exist, but mm -hmm. it doesn't get to that state in the game as quick. Like, yeah. if you looked at a map like Volskaya, it used to be you get that first protector, you take a fort, you get the walls, you get you maybe get a double, you know, double tower, and then you get a top fort. That's like, that used to be a ton of XP, and it mm -hmm. was like a level, a level and a half. That mm -hmm. meant they were 10 before you, you know, if we talk about talent tier advantages. Or level 10, you're level 9. Everything that we do as level 10, you will not be able to contest. So they got the heal camp, more experience. They could take your turret, right? Now the game's kind of blown out, and it's very, very difficult to come back. Yeah. Now, with the experience changes, they'll get that protector. They'll take your top fort, but you're the same level. And sure, they're passively going to get potentially a mm -hmm. lead, but it's not going to hit as hard as I think that's I the big thing that they were after. I did notice that in most of my Hero League games today, despite how it felt like we were so far behind because the enemy team had more kills than us, we were still on the same talent here. Maybe yeah. just like a few XP points behind, but we were still, it was more, it was easier to catch up an XP and stay the same competitively. Mm -hmm. For me, I noticed, especially the one map that really uh, kind of really showed us true colors was Sky Temple. You, when you used to be able to sit there and take a shrine by yourself, take at least two, one to two lanes with a Sky Temple tower, you used to see that significant advance, and now you're not seeing that. Uh, so in my eyes, a lot of the objectives nowadays have become more of a finishing blow to either mm -hmm. a, a game or, a, you know, there, it wasn't a steamroll at this point, because now you kind of use them more to, you already have the keeps, the forts down, but now you're using that objective just to kind of get to the the core. Instead of, in general, you want to get the keeps and the forts down to get the XP bonus, which is now yeah. kind of making objectives to me feel kind of important, but at the same time, kind of eh, they at the same you, time. Objectives win you the game, right? They don't, they don't, um, they don't get you the advantage. Before, it was, like you said, Vipe, it was you get the objective, you have the advantage. Now, mm -hmm. use the objective to win the game. Like, yep. if you look at a, like a map like Dragonshire, um, you know, you push down bottom lane, you get that bottom four, you use the dragon, the next dragon, you push, you, you get the bottom key. Like, you did that, you would be two levels up in the past. Now, mm -hmm. you're maybe a level up, but that next dragon is going to win, right? Um, and you're not mm -hmm. going to be able to do that without the dragon. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that if that was what they set out to do, it, it really you do feel it. And as Vagby said, that you don't just see these explosive leads when you were objective anymore. Instead, you see that you're slowly, mm-hmm. slowly kind of progressing instead of just like the objective is the main focus to get that advantage over your team. Mm-hmm. Which, like you said, I mean, I really didn't kind of get to me until you said Valskaya like that really that was one of those maps that when you got that objective it's so strong that it can literally take out two if not three lanes if you're lucky if no one's contesting you and you saw that huge gap and now you just don't it's more of like a interesting mechanic on how the catapults are affecting the lanes and how it's actually going to affect overall map play so what we're used to you know so I have a question then if 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 we're talking about overall effect in map play league I I hate to keep comparing this to league but it's it's they're two different types I mean they're two MOBAs but they're so mechanically differently played that it's I think it's a good way to like you know compare the two in league you have to 100% have your certain champions lane in each lane you know 80 k 80 80 carry goes bottom um you know you're a mid laner you're a you're a jungler you're you're the the tank goes top that's like you know you can't do it any other way Mm -hmm. um do you think hots is going to be forced to have those roles now in a certain lane like um the a solo laner is a solo laner more important or less important now like because of the xp changes uh, I, I think they've always had a good importance because, um, you know, jumping ahead just a little bit, the bruiser category that they're implementing is any person in that role is a heavy sustained solo laner. They have mm-hmm. good sustain, they have good way of staying alive. And now, without, like, you used to be able to, like, get a three lane map, you were able to, like, lose someone in a lane and then your solo laner be able to push and actually gain forts and, you know, get XP get bonuses for you. And so that one person missed wasn't that big of a deal. Now, if you don't have three people in each lane making sure those those minions go to you for XP, there's a huge disadvantage. So having a solo laner primarily in a game now is a big deal. But at the same time, it's not going to go more towards the league setting because league is like laning, last hits, and then ganking. Like you can solo gank in league. Here you can't. It's more of a team based still. So giving up that extra that one person in a lane to get a kill on somebody is like if you don't get it you're going to miss out now. Unlike before mm-hmm. in the past where missing one wave was like, okay, not that big of a deal. Now it's a huge disadvantage if you miss one or two waves in a lane. You know, and a solo laner can clear those quickly if they're by themselves, which would deny your en- your enemy team XP. So if you don't have a matchup, I think it kind of might have some kind of separate, uh, separate disadvantage. Yeah. Anyway. It's, in- yeah. it's interesting to look at League 2. I think there, there kind of is a similarity. I mean, I I believe that like heroes design somewhat have structure when it's like team composition, right? Um, but I think like it's flexible now because you can understand. I think what Vi- Vipe's point is that it is important to have someone that it can soak. Um, and mm-hmm. you know, as a off laner, when you know we were playing competitively, you know, it was the main reason for that big tanky guy in the off lane was because it was hard to kill. Him. Oh. Computer, I haven't touched my mouth. Uh, it was hard to kill that off, right? Um, and so you never miss. So, but if now, like, like I would try Tassadar, for example, an off. That's something that's not um, traditional, right? But because the games go a lot later, and Tassadar is a hero that, like, once he makes it to the late game, he's incredibly strong. Mm-hmm. Uh, you put him in the off lane, he just stands there, make sure that he gets the experience, right? Uh, and then eventually you'll maybe hit the 16 power spike, 20, you know, permanent Archon, and then you can win the game. So I, I think that what's important now is that you're not so much concerned about sieging and getting that value if someone leaves the lane. Like it used to be, you know, pick Sony up there because if they leave, she's going to smash towers. Now it's like that person just needs to make sure that they don't experience. And as long as they don't die in doing so, I think that in most cases, pretty much anyone can and in a, in a in a you know that yep. that low line. yeah i mean there's like that uh anyone can do it as long as they don't that imaginary line in the middle of the lane now you don't need to push mm-hmm. like to get that xp bonus you can actually just make sure you soak and call it a day and back up to your tower stay it's play it safe 
there yeah. really isn't a need to like in the past have your zagara way up in someone's fort trying to take it down you know it's an advantage at some point but you'll get it in time you won't lose the xp or you won't gain an xp advantage yeah. you know especially with even the towers like i think now two towers is the xp advantage of one tower so it's to a point you don't need to do that mm -hmm. you know so yeah and back in the day, like when we actually had ammo charges, it made yeah. sense to push forward. Now there's no point. Yeah. You know? Cigar, you would walk up just to like throw mm -hmm. your roach, right? Mm -hmm. Just to zap the ammo. Yep. Yeah. But now, so, like, that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. So now, like, I noticed that when I'm, when I'm, uh, like I said, you, you're easily now able to stay around the same XP, um, you know, range and, and talent tiers. Um, but in terms of rotations, um, you still obviously want to stay in that lane and soak that XP. Um, at what point is it okay to, you know, rotate down, you know, grab a kill and then go back up? Is it still the same as it was before? Or can you, like Viper said, you know, leave that lane a little bit longer? Um, is it okay now to leave a lane completely un- um unattended to for an amount of time and then still be able to catch up i mean yeah i i think like the logic that um we were kind of getting into and that i kind of had it on the patch was that with the changes to the passive xp increase sacrificing in a, a lane of soak or like a minion wave of mm -hmm. soak for a fort in my opinion about equals itself out in like three or four minutes so right. and then eventually you're going to start uh having more value on top of that right then you're gaining mm -hmm. more than the other team so there's a trade-off um i think where you'll get incredibly punished now is if you lose one wave of soak and then another wave of soak and then maybe you fail to take a fort then you're going to be at a very big advantage um but i mm -hmm. think just like the previous patch it is okay to sacrifice xp for forts because eventually you'll get that xp back in passive Mm -hmm. so right so not, it's not terrible it's not it's not something you just before when there was no passive increase like when they had first released on the pctr there mm -hmm. was no reason to at all right like, no one was like in, in our trims and practice and stuff no one was put that we were literally all just standing there i went and made a sandwich came back and i was up <laughs> to two levels like, <laughs> like, that's what the gameplay was but i was doing the correct thing and doing it. but now you know uh, an advantage that you can have and, and here's something that you know i would do like let's say i'm playing new york he clears wave incredibly fast when he gets neil peasant out. i would smash the wave the second it came out the gate and then i could rotate because at that point the other player on the other team has to get the rest of the minions and mm -hmm. now i have the rotation so that's yeah. a rotation advantage that you can have nowadays you know the other team has to soak xp or they'll get it now so, go ahead oh, i was just thinking um if I remember correctly, they did increase the damage output of the minion waves now, correct? Didn't they? Maybe. I mean, again, maybe I don't even notice with Leork because you literally whang, you're oh, swinging yeah. in and boom, they're all dead. But it's, they, it, they might have. I mean, it's yeah. It's more of a fact now with the, with the catapult implementation into an early game. Now it's kind of almost in a way is get the last hit on the wave then leave it and let it push itself. Mm -hmm. while you get an objective that's kind of what they were going more for instead of focusing down lanes it just allows you to kind of like you said just get the advantage wave and then leave, leave. and not continue to and not be up there constantly helping it push along which you know kind of came in play with uh, with specialist changes like sylvanas getting her uh changes it kind of shows they want you to pull away from the pve sense and get more to pvp player combat you know just get him away from just smalling lanes just running advantage. just running it down just running yep. it down you know mm -hmm. yeah they, they don't want what i did notice when we were um i don't know if you noticed this might be when we were streaming rank win on uh, mm -hmm. yesterday um mm -hmm. uh, i noticed that we lost a lot of games where they just went around ganking us and didn't even lane they had one person yep. laning and had the rest of them, like we were trying to lane. We were trying to do like the old way, like, you know, people in each lane and like, you know, push down, you know, be like kind of passive early game, more PVE. But mm -hmm. they, like these teams that were against us were just having one person lane and the rest going around and just wiping us, like killing us. 
Like, is yeah. I've never seen that before. I mean, I've seen that in like where you do, you know, on on Towers of Doom four and four, and then leave, you know, like Zul or have Zul like double soak or or you know, you go as four and four. But like, I've mm-hmm. never seen like anybody just go around and just powerhouse like it was it was weird i don't even know how to describe it but they, you remember that right yeah i think they had a mediv that game if i remember correctly and they kind of just kept the advantage on us but it was just because i think they had a was it, you know some Muro double soaking lanes um and it, it goes to show that if they they built for a, a gank comp they were just trying to really get that advantage on us early game and it didn't show too much in the early state until we saw that we were seven to ten, and it was yeah. there was, and and then like you said, like after that we were just trying to play passive and trying to soak back into that mm-hmm. that level advantage or you know equality, and it just wasn't happening. There was no way, and that was when it was scary when you could not advance because the team was way ahead of you in levels and their damage output was more significantly better than yours. Overall. So how do you, with the new XP chain, I keep coming back to this, how do you, like I, we were talking about earlier, how you can easily stay on the same talent tiers, but in an, in an instant or, or in a situation where you, you are just down three levels, mm-hmm. what is the best, and, and they're like steamrolling you, is there any way to come back from that? Like, I know the best way to do is that is to get picks, but when you're in that situation, is it basically just game over? Because I know there's a lot of comeback mechanics. So with the introduction to the catapults, this is something that a lot of players complained about. Even myself kind of said something about it. The catapults do push wave, right? And mm-hmm. and that's a good thing and that's a bad thing. A good thing because it means if they're uncontested, then they'll get value eventually. And I think this is like post 15 minutes or something like that. I think uh, post 15 minutes or 20, they get a buff where they start doing more damage and they're they're threatened. But mm-hmm. prior to that, they just kind of passively pushed, okay? And because they do that, you can safely, very safely, I mean, on your wall, say, soak XP, all right? But the other team cannot, because in order for them to get to that XP, they have to come to your wall. And your wall is on your side of the, or like on the map, right? Um, so you can come back from denying them that, so, right? Uh, making them rotate into you to get it. Like they have to come to your side of the base or map out, I said, uh, to 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 get that XP, and then that's when you can find those picks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right. But they're they're really not like they. Sh- in reality, they shouldn't. I mean, e- I guess my point is, prior to this patch, dying and getting in game would get you behind, right? And mm-hmm. you would have just as difficult a time coming back then as you would now right um yeah realistically you know it is harder to come back now and the other team in my opinion if they had a couple forts on you they have you in the new patch lock essentially a lock that the other team can have and uh Koth and luck said something about it with uh expansions and resources starcraft kind of essentially they're just gonna always have more resources than you at a certain game so it's mm-hmm. up to you to deny them from getting that experience I'll, and then find your opportunities when they play aggressive like that mm-hmm. right because they have to come up so if you have a garage standing there waiting and you know that all oh, this uh Zeratul is going to try uh, this probably you know he's going to come and soak this right then i can gank that maybe we get the kill there and then we can now press back into the game um but yeah yeah i mean it, it's difficult it is difficult I, I think comeback experience is still your friend it really is your ally um mm. getting one kill when you're three levels down about you came out mm-hmm. yeah that's really all you need, so i find so, it go ahead oh sorry i find it like to a point now where camps are more a defense than a push as some sense like if a team has a significant lane advantage and you because of the catapults that are coming out getting a siege camp is just going to equalize if not push back the wave a little bit instead of actually helping the lane advance farther you know the one thing i did notice is they didn't put through the xp uh bonus i think with the camps now the merc camps don't give that anymore i think they dropped that okay so they so they they took out they were gonna make it so the camps when you defend they get okay rid of that they did buff camp xp so that is another we haven't even discussed camp yet which i'm glad we haven't because that's (laughs) (laughs) yes doing camps gives xp um 
and it is important. It is dire. Honestly, if you want to have an advantage, you're going to find it from your camp. As we've talked about now, it's very hard to get an advantage. Mm-hmm. But camps do give XP, and XP gives advantage, right? Um, right. Having a hero on the team that is good at doing it, or just having maybe even two heroes that can bust them out quickly. Uh, yeah. A map like uh, Altered Valley, that little null camp. People don't really know this. <laughs> that camp spawns incredibly fast. Like It's like a mm-hmm. minute and a half, like, just like the Samurai camp. Um, or the Samurai camp. Like You can bust that thing out a minute and 30 seconds over and over and over. If the other team's not doing it on that minute 30, you're eventually going to, if you're down levels, if you're down XP, you can still come back doing that. So I think that's something that a lot of people didn't think about before, and we weren't looking at, even as Vipey just said now, camps as a defense. We weren't looking at camps as, this is how I get a level. That's what those things do nowadays. Mm-hmm. I, I think that that's important. Okay, so... But that's another rabbit hole, and we can discuss that. So I love that camps now give XP and that we can use that to our advantage instead of a defense. But, and as we were talking about pushing out lanes, there is a downside, as you said, Mac, to pushing out lanes too far. Because then in the late game, you know... Your t- your opponents can come back easier. So I I don't know where I was going with this, but all- I'm just I'm just kind of like reiterating what you're saying, but like in a in a weird it's way. All, it's all it's all about timing. Yeah. It's all about I, time. So if we if we do it if we do null camp every minute and a half, all right? Yeah. Every minute and a half, we have two people do the camp. Okay, mm. and at that same time, our person that's in the top lane and our person in the bottom lane kills those waves quickly as they can. All right, we now have our rotation from top and bottom come mid. We have a null camp. We have all five of them. Okay, how does the other team react to that? Do they send all five into the null camp and defend it? Do they leave people to soak? Then we have a five man push with a null camp. Get the advantage from the camp you want to push with. I mean. It's an incentive. Not only mm. does it get you the XP lead, but it also allows you to put ports and towers, which eventually win you the game. I mean, if 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 we're pushing in, let's say we've gotten a fort, and the other team's trying to free, and we five man mid with a null camp on alter, we're gonna get towers. And then the next time we do, we're gonna get the or we're gonna have. And then the mm-hmm. next time we do it, we're gonna get. So okay, if, For, let me let me stop just, you. Okay, go ahead. Let me stop you for a second. For those of you who play this game casually. Can you explain what freeze in null camp is to everybody? I, okay, so freezing is kind of what I was talking about before, where you just don't do anything. If I, I, I mean, I, I don't want to sell a video that I uploaded onto YouTube, but there is one on my YouTube channel where I just watched a minion wave fight each other. That's all I did, and then I spawned a catap- I took a fort in that lane, and I watched what the catapult did with the minion wave. And essentially, what happens is if you don't, if you don't touch the minions. They just will equally kill each other, right? It's a 50-50. They're just going to kill each other, and they're not going to progress. Thus, a lane freeze happens. Um, so when I say that, if I let your minions come right to my gate, right where they're about to get hit by the turrets, and then I stop them, and then they meet my minion, they're going to just 50-50 each other. Just they're, Now the wave is frozen, right? Um, okay. Right? Does that make sense? And, and we yeah. use that terminology... Because, yeah, essentially the wave is frozen. It doesn't move. The catapult, however, is going to make it like a 55-45, right? So the catapult mm-hmm. is going to skew that. It's not going to make the wave move much faster, but the wave will eventually move. Um, if that makes sense. So the, the funny team is... Go ahead. Yeah, you know the, that. No, I was saying the funny part is that I've, I've done that before. Um, mm-hmm. And there actually is... Ma- three lane maps actually have a different... Uh, the mid lane will always kind of freeze and meet in the middle. The top mm-hmm. lane, the bottom lane, either or will go in opposite directions. One of them will push farther than the other just because of the pathing of the. Yeah, minions. yeah. I was, I was gonna say. So, yeah. so the yeah. pathing, the pathing does affect this a little bit. Um, but with a null camp in that one single lane is gonna be. The like, null camp also smashes the building armor, which makes it even easier to siege. But I mm-hmm. guess this is another basic thing that a lot of people may not even know. Like mm-hmm. minion melee minions are the health bar, and mm-hmm. the range minions are the damage, and that's a concept that's very simple, but it's one that gets past a lot of people. Yep. Um, so what that means is if I kill the range minions, the health bar is still there. It's like a magic card. If there's a 2-2 and I 
remove the two, but he still had two health. I mm -hmm. still have to deal the two health, right? Um, so I can kind of slow the progression of my wave push uh, if I kill the ranger, um, because in the 50, um, it, yeah, it, it's interesting. But th this is I'm not even gonna go down. Th this is all you need to know. Freezing is just not touching the wave, right? <laughs> this is all high level. Stuff. It's in, don't yeah. don't worry. Don't even We're worry not... about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, eventually we'll get there. But for right now, yeah. no, yeah. thing is a good thing, and you can use it effectively. No. It helps. You keep the other team. Yeah, yeah. Null camp, not null camp. Null okay. camp, null as camp. in like the three, the three, the camp in the that will they're, go mid lane. That's they're, three. They're, they're nulls. They're nulls. I yeah, sorry. I kind of said it. I say it weird. <laughs> I say it weird. I usually um, call them easy camps too. Just generally, an mm -hmm. easy camp is a camp that is easy to get. I, siege camps are easy, <laughs> right? Yeah. Hard camp night. I think even back nights in the OG, are hard because you can't dodge them. Yeah, yeah. Back yeah. in the OG, like I want to say, like alpha beta, they were literally called easy and hard camps, and that's just mm -hmm. stuff. But yeah. easy camps are typically easy to do, like sieges and dodge, and then the hard yeah. camps you can't dodge. But um, mm -hmm. also, if anybody in chat has any questions, um, please either at me or Vipey. Um, and we'd be more than welcome to answer any questions that you have um, while we while we talk. Um, so let's see here. What's um, did you guys want to start talking about camps, or do we want to talk about the specialist role and the new Sylvanas, or do we want to go camps and then go down the role of specialist? I I, th I think camps are a, a bit of a long haul yeah. with mm -hmm. how they with how they work now. Um, it's like a whole episode. Yeah, they really because back in the day, just to give you an idea of why, because back in the day it was like take the camp just to add pressure at certain timings. Now the timings are different, and now the lanes are different. So now there's a whole okay. different branch of how they're implemented. But okay, I so think... we'll we'll make camp something something for a later episode. Yeah. I didn't talk want... about Sylvanas to be good. I was gonna say I want to talk about. <laughs> no, you don't special... say you. No. <laughs> Sylvanas. I want to talk about the specialist <laughs> changes and um specifically. Sylvanas. Um, I know I have been hearing mixed feelings about her. Myself, I, I kind of am underwhelmed with her changes. Um, she feels obviously a lot slower and more clunky, um, but I know a lot of people have said that she is overpowered and, you know, it just, uh, I don't, I don't know. So, um, Vipey, Mac, have you guys played the changes on Sylvanas yet? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here, here's my, <laughs> He's like, here, here, here's my of. point of view. Um, I used to play Sylvanas a lot. I used to be a specialist uh, player back in like an alpha, and I used to mm. play Zagar every game because Zagar was the only specialist that was great. And uh, but Sylvanas herself back in the day, it kind of felt like uh, I played her as a tracer where you use mobility to stay, keep yourself alive. Yeah. Uh, if you're going Q builds or you're using W build to keep the damage output poking, kind of like Lunara. Um, I never really used her as a specialist in a way until the objective came around. Now Maybe that's kind of how I, sorry that's how, that's kind of how I use W. I would easier like you know take the life drain to keep myself in in um, team fights longer. Or mm -hmm. I've just been playing her right before her her uh, change as like that dash and go like damage. Ha ha! Just kidding. Bye. You know, kind of mm -hmm. thing. And you would own people, but that doesn't. It, it feels so different now. Now. Wow. Now for me, when I play, the first impression I, impression I got with her was exactly that, was clunky and very mm -hmm. slow. Because, yeah. number one, I still find myself chirp, like tapping my Q when I play her. Um, <laughs> she, she, she just feels like she's, mm -hmm. not a, she's not a quick auto attacker. The one pressed Q makes her seem like she's attacking fast, but personally, she's slower. Um, yeah. I don't know. How, how do you feel about that, Matt? Like, how, how, like, I mean, I'm it, one of the people that think she's bust. But, oh, no, she, she busted oh. in a good way, like she's yeah, too OP. I'll, no, yeah, but, yeah. But what, I'll, I'll come out and say that, like, I personally think she's like really overpowered. But so, what build do you go on her? Do you go W build? I mean, I've gone pretty much every build. I think the only mm. important thing for me is uh, at level seven, I really like dagger. Um, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what I guess bringing it back, um, I and this is a good point on what you two are just talking about. She is clunky now, um, it's different way yeah. different it used to be yeah in my opinion it, it was a, a bit at times it was like back then it was like when 
you saw an opportunity, you kind of threw everything out there, just like Tracer, right? Yep. See the opportunity, you blink in, you bomb, do all this stuff. Um, now she's much more of like a rainer. She's very slow, but when she picks up, it's it's actually insane. Like when you, mm-hmm. I think, um, I think people have misunderstood her a bit. Um, and a lot of it is because she is clunky. Her auto attack range feels kind of weird. Her auto animation doesn't mm-hmm. have that. You know, like yeah. it doesn't have yeah. that snap to it. Like yeah. before, it wasn't as important, right? The Q was more important. Than, you should have been auto attacking prior, but now it's like it's it's so important that you are doing it. Mm-hmm. If you aren't auto attacking, um, you know she's pretty bad. Um, everything comes from that pass. But yeah, yeah, the build it like the build is like dagger at seven, and the reason for that is, you know, when you auto attack something that has the dagger mark on it after you've three stacked. If you hit your Q and all those Qs hit the person with the dagger and you're auto-attacking, I mean, it's just... Great it's, train. It's going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you'll put 50% of someone's health yeah. on them in, and in a second or two, right? Have, have you noticed, too, the irony of it is that she actually melts Garrosh. Oh, like, yeah. All, like, all percentage tanks, base, it's yeah. the irony of it. It's hilarious. Yeah. Like, all, all tanks right now, like, mm-hmm. if they step to Sylvanas and she gets the triple triple auto on them and they're in their yep. stack, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's insane damage. Um, it's it, to to me. It feels like remember when Hanzo came out. Everyone said Hanzo felt kind of slow in mm-hmm, the way he moved. Yeah. It's similar because, like you said, yeah. the mentality is changing. I like I I like career work. Number one, I love the mind control. Mm-hmm. I like skill shots. I don't care what anyone says. I if, I think web should be a skill shot. Like mm-hmm. it is just to me, it's more impactful and it feels better when you get it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, to, to I don't know about you, but I think it's what seven is uh when you have the E, you get you can automatically get three stacks and everybody with the banshee wave um, is it seven I, or four i look at heroes.com right yep um <laughs> heroes, sure. heroes uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> check out all builds on heroesheart.com uh, i'll make it so long <laughs> right now we'll talk about it anyway yeah so mm-hmm. Sylvanas. that's uh, somewhere in there there's just so mm-hmm. many heroes Regardless of it, though, how you feel about it, though, because I, I personally like taking it. It makes you, because I have a big, I, I used to preach, don't use your E as a damage deal. And that's why I never oh, liked it. That's why I, I never liked like it like doing that. It, like using it as a damage. What's that? Do you like using E as a damage no. now with that talent? Now I do, yes, actually. Because okay. if, yeah. if, if you're going W, that ability to throw that out, if you feel, if you internally feel comfortable, and not mm-hmm. threatened by their team, no dive, no one's gonna get you. Throw it out, drop a W on the nearest tank, and boom, you got okay. stacks. You're going, and you yeah. will rank up that early game. Yeah, so um, I, I like that a lot. I mean, I actually I don't even think I had looked at that seven. Uh, I was mm-hmm. I'm I was hooked on barb shot in the beginning because it increases, yeah. um, and then that fifth shot on top of a poison. Mm-hmm. If you hit it on like a like a garage, for example, I mean, you're just it's so insane. Um, yep. And then I like the, and then I started picking up the dagger because we moved to like an armor reduction sort of thing to mm-hmm. kind of permanently keep the twenty five armor reduction at the thirteen. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't think I'd ever looked at that seven times because yeah, if you use your E aggressively and mm-hmm. you immediately get the poison and then you throw your dagger, pop Q. I mean, go into try mode right now if you guys are watching and try it. Uh, are we are we talking feel... about wind runner? Yeah, uh, yeah. F- festering wounds is the seven talent. Windrunner yeah. is the, you know, you throw your spirit and then right, right, right. You reactivate and kind of link. And what mm-hmm. uh, I've been saying is before, you always use it defensively. And now mm-hmm. you can use it aggressively if you talent. I don't what? know. I always use my E aggressively. Getting those last hit <laughs> cute kills with my E was just so was satisfying. I don't I'm know. Sure. I'm sure. <laughs> that was me. That was like, ah, Kagiri, stop using your E as an es- uh, use your E only as an escape. Why are you doing that? <laughs> I like to kill people with my E. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> but the one, the one thing I find so hard to pick though is at level twenty. I, I mean, I know that um, was it Withering Barrage? I think it is. Yeah. Or, Q, Q, Q yeah. Out yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mm-hmm. feel like that's the go-to, but at the same time, like. The, if you pick mind control, twenty second cooldown, it's like a variant taunt, you know. Yeah, yeah it's very good. it's, and if you it's set it up with a variant taunt. Oh yeah, that seems really mind. annoying. Like if you're on the oh, other yeah. team and there's a twenty second cooldown, control, mm-hmm. depending on if uh, the Sylve can actually hit the hit the mind control, but still, and so, Sylve is like Bay because she still has blink. Yep. That's a, that's yes, like, and you go like you can blink 
she's Freaking the last survivor giant <laughs> giant wailing arrow right like, you go wind runner in you go wind runner in and then you blink out and it's just like hi bye here's all your damage i'm yeah. killing all of you and then I, see ya i can't <laughs> banshee scream <laughs> mad at uh Bolt. but the one, yeah. the one thing i can't get over is i was a i liked possession for the lore of yeah. it for warcraft 3 style and mm. uh back in the day it was good because like it's like we know is that the back minions do the most damage i would mind control those and kind of be able to walk away from the lane and get that advantage it's still good but now the poison dagger with the way that w spread works now it's nuts I've, have you seen it on uh, braxis holdout yeah yeah oh, yeah. oh my god There's wait does the um does that affect the catapults or no it's now a instead of being one stack like it used to be you still to mind control catapults with one charge now it's three charges does a catapult oh. so it's an advantage but a disadvantage if you pick it in, in reality yeah. i don't think it has a place anymore yeah it's, um, yeah. it's it, her four towns are, are very interesting yeah um, they're they're her siege talents you know clearly we know mm -hmm. but it's just like it, the poison or the Mer mercenary queen because mercenary queen has some nice you know, minus that it doesn't do damage to monsters anymore. Uh, her barb shot, I think it was back in the day. It's still, her. it's still, it still stuns and does extra damage when you're camping. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it's still, it is, it, it's still good. Uh, mm -hmm. I, and like, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, Mike. Oh, no, no. Oh, I'm, I'm about to get on a different topic though. Okay. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, what about possession? Well, we we're. Uh, so it's. With, that's what we were saying. Like it's. Yeah, it's a teeter right now because it's like there's uh, what, what I like when what what here's what <laughs> wait, storm. Team wait, does. no, I'm not not possession. I'm sorry, mercenary queen. I'm sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So that's what we're <laughs> we're we were here for you. So you're so we're, pretty. Like, <laughs> I'm <kidding. laughs> I meant mercenary queen. No, okay, so I think they uh, maybe maybe Heroes Earth website needs an edit. Maybe it doesn't. According to the website, withering barrage is now the merc. It's that's what I'm reading. I'm reading the tooltip. It, it uh -huh. increases the damage of your mercenaries by 60%. And then Sylvana stuns and deals 30 additional damage to mercenaries. She three pass. Oh. So it, it technically still Merc Queen. Maybe mm -hmm. it's called Merc Queen. Maybe this. Edited. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, so that's what we were talking about, Kigiri, is like oh. possession now used to be able to just whole wave is mine right yep. right 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 now you have those three charges and with catapults too like like was saying it was like one catapult a couple minions like yeah you it's, know it's, you, gotta, you gotta be strategic about it instead of just going okay no no no, no. This, is, Good. this is all mine yeah like, wow. used to, i used to back in the day be able to take three catapults that i'm about to take on my core and reverse them back the opposite way and you know now it's like oh i gotta really choose what i'm doing the here. strategy before was let's lose top keep and then i'm just gonna make cat go mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the The funny part is about her is that now she actually has a sustain because she didn't really have one uh -huh. um, back she then. The, and now, well, she had the dagger thirteen. Yeah, she, she had the life steal, like... dude. Yeah, I but... I always took that. I could last forever in team fights mm -hmm. with that. I, everybody was like, "Why do you? Why don't you take Windrunner?" I'm like, Windrunner's "Have you good. tried the life steal? Like it's in, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's insane." Yeah, okay, here, do you know? Do you know? There's a thing there's sport. And I, <laughs> Okay. Do you <laughs> know do you know how I got myself out of silver? I played Sylvanas and I went lifesteal. So there and were I went no W support. builds. <laughs> I went W builds because sometimes you can't trust your support. I, I, I mean I feel that, honestly. <laughs> I mean <laughs> So I'm, I'm not here playing the plays. I'm just burning I'm <laughs> I'm heating myself up. I I don't need no one else to heal me. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, it isn't like her four talents are all pretty good now. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think they all have a place. It's, really I just, it's, just, it's just these are getting used to her. Go ahead, Vikings. yeah. I just like I, I really appreciate what the dev team is doing with really trying to diver make these talent choices really diverse and give them a place. And some of them still, to me, at least with Sylvanas, I've noticed, um, really, there's some that are just like, okay, that's the one. You know, mm -hmm. but but they really do have feel like they have their place. I mean, the ultimates themselves both have a good place, um, depending on what you're doing. And that's what I that's my biggest when I look at everything. When I look at the ultimate choices for heroes, if if one of them is just significantly the better one, I kind of get tilted mentally because I'm like, all right, why does it even have a second one? 
you know, and a lot of the old, a lot of the old builds were like that. I mean, even, mm -hmm. even to to the day, some of the new heroes are still kind of, you know, teeter on it. Um, yeah. But yeah, so Lannis, there's there's tons of different choices. It depends, you know, do we ever find a best build, right? And I think yeah. Sylvanas is still in that limbo. And I, I personally really think that players aren't playing her correctly. No. Um, mm -hmm. That's yeah. just her critique because her win rate is very low. But, you know, you look at a player like Snitch on Dignitas, he's in, he's in love with the character. And if you watch mm -hmm. him play, he destroys with her. Uh, yep. Even when I play in Hero League, you know, just smack. And then people are like, Yo, yo, yo! What's that bill, dude? What's that bill? Like, <laughs> how, 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 yo, how you, how you the numbers? <laughs> what is he doing? Like, how is this? Whoa, whoa! Where did that, dude, that's the lowest that win rate, from? dude. Yeah, like that's lit. Like that, that happens in Twitch chat when I play Savannah, and I'm like, no, guys, I'm literally playing the character yep. correctly. Like, that, that's all. And you guys just suck. No, I'm kidding. No, no, it's, it, I mean, it, all you gotta do. I mean, she is. I'll be honest. She's actually a lot difficult now because you do have to maintain yeah. that. You have to, you have yeah. to, you know, get you have to move in those and get in those auto attacks. Mm -hmm. She's definitely more mechanically um, yeah. hard to play, and I love that about her. I love that you're just not like, yeah. I, I don't know. It it feels less, even though she does feel underwhelming and clunky and slow. It feels, it doesn't feel as boring to play her. Because you're constantly having to Thinking. watch your talents. Yeah. You're constantly having to watch who you're doing damage to and how you're, um, you know, dealing out more damage. And it it just feel it it feels it's bittersweet for She's me. She's just clunky Definitely because bittersweet. of her auto attack. I, yeah, I just yeah. Really think it's her yeah. auto attack. The animation. auto attack in the queue. The boom, 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 yeah. boom. When before it was like boom, 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 like like a drive by Sylvanas, and we're good. <laughs> No, like before, when before the thing, uh, before her rework, yeah, you, getting hit by a soul was annoying because it was like that don't, 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 don't. It's like, dude, just stop hitting me, please stop it. Like, you hear that little that thud, and it's like, ugh. but now it's like, don't, don't, it's not even, don't, it's... don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, like, it's okay. like I'm picking up water balloons and just throwing them at you slowly, <laughs> but then the dagger, and then it. And then they're like, oh my yep. god, I just took 50% of my health. That, Chill out. I love I how I understand exactly what you meant just by those <laughs> sounds when I could <laughs> <laughs> I mean I just I just love the the W makes me so excited. I love throwing yeah. a dagger onto a structure and hitting it once and it's like boom. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. like, oh my god, like All everyone's poisoned. You know? Yeah. It's insane. Like she just uh, yeah, she feels slower, but it, that at this point, I like it because it's the same thing when like everyone knows I love I love my F. She's my bae. but I I loved it that her kit was great, but I hated when she came out and anyone can pick her up and just maul a team. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the nerfs were necessary. Now it makes her more of a skill cap. But what worries me is that like when K, when the KTZ came out, yeah, he pumped out a lot of damage, but he still was still a difficult hero to play. Mm -hmm. And they nerfed him before anyone figured out how to actually play him or counter him rather. And then now he's in a kind of a spot where you're like, okay, he can still be do some damage, but he can't be as viable. And with Savannah's, like Mac was saying, is like people are just not picking, just not shifting gears and thinking of it as a new hero. They have to kind of just figure out the new nuance to her than what play they used her to like play as. old self, right? Like, yep. yeah, you, just, you really, you really can't. No, really there's can't. there's no there's no. Then you'll be like, I'm not doing anything. I, yep. I hit my Q before I I W'd. They they were standing. I W. Then I, I'm not doing damage. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're not. You're, you're absolutely not. But the way I, I like about all it, all my buttons. I, I you know I don't. know. It, it feels to me because I, the reason why I like it is because it reminds me of Honest play style. Getting those mm, those five stacks, getting right. those five stacks, getting those five stacks. Yeah. You know, and now with her, it's kind of like Sylvanas. Huh. You just kind of rotate your auto attacks around and to make sure you get those extra stacks on mm. them to get that bonus damage and to spread the you spread your uh, W, get the stacks, stuff like, like that. Kind of like Lunara. I mean, it's kind of like yeah. Lunara. If if Lunara's, yeah. if if people were to look at Sylvanas like Lunara, you know, crunch your W when you get a couple get stacks, stacks in, right? You hit the Q, you hit the auto, then you crunch. Now you're at three. And yeah. like this is your this is your but on but with Sylvanas when you're at three that's when you're putting out the big damage. Lunara, she kind of has a cap on her damage a little bit, but you don't have a cap on your damage with Sylvanas. Mm -hmm. All of it I comes know. out on that window, right? Like mm -hmm. that's go button. That's go button city. That's that. And, yep. and if you can maintain that, 
Mm-hmm. It, that's like yeah it feels great i don't know i, I really like it it's just it, it her auto attack i hate it i literally hate it i mean yeah I yeah love her 13 talent when you get the auto attack range yeah. like i take that talent not because I, it's probably the best but i take it because it makes her feel like now i'm a real archer right like now I'm, i can really maintain yep. um i don't know i'm not like a little melee tracer running yeah i i, <laughs> I, I feel like she just uh in the fight, the, the, I feel like she has this ability now. She used to not be able to hold her own against another hero. Like I've, I've taken on Zeratul, so we'll try and just we'll unload everything on me with three sets, and I can still, you know, come on the better side of the fight. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, yeah. overall, she actually has the ability to, out of nowhere, just throw damage at you. Like first, oh, yeah. you'll you'll get hit with her and go, oh, oh, that's an arrow. Oh, it's an arrow. And then after the third arrow, it's like, oh god, it's arrows. <laughs> like you know, like... And, then, and then you shoot like wailing or possession comes. Yep. And, then mm-hmm. and it follows like... you no matter what, too. Yep. Right. It'll mm-hmm. it'll it'll that little arrow, that cute arrow, will follow you. Yeah. I'm excited for the XP changes. I'm excited for all of the changes. I think now um, they'll be able to focus more on. I don't know on on balancing the heroes instead of sorry Mac catering to pro play. I don't know. Do you think it? I know. I'm so sorry, Mac. When I'm so sorry. Ever cater but, to the pros? but you know what I? You know I'm gonna I'm gonna honestly go same thing with that you said there. That I've always said that I'm like the game has always been kind of pushed towards a pro sense, which is great and I love it. But love now it now to give this is an it's taking here's a storm and it's an incubation and allowing it to grow as a you know, a game for the masses in a way, yeah. you know, and then mm-hmm. in time, it'll grow back into a competitive sense. I can, I have, I have. Oh, hope. yeah. I'm oh, I, for some you know? reason in the pit of my stomach, I have a feeling that it's only going to go up from here. I hope. I mean, I, I just feel really good about the changes. I'm excited. I'm really yeah. excited. Um, Even though there was a lot of casualties, which is, it's not. Yeah. good at all uh, well, but <laughs> i know i'm sorry Matt. it's it, it it's really not a good situation but i'm i'm hopeful feels bad, honestly it feels real bad phoenix right phoenix is yep unless it, um, i don't know if you guys all know this they turn to ashes and they rebirth from the ashes Rebirth. A brand new phoenix. <laughs> yeah. No, we that's, ash- that's... Literally, we're ashes. I'm ashes yep. right now, guys. Am I going to rebirth as a phoenix? Is Bob going to do something? Please. <laughs> I'm trying I mean, to become a phoenix. Let's be I, a phoenix. No, but I, I'm with you on that. I really feel like like Heroes of the Storm is just going to go back into an incubation. It's going to c- kind of craft itself back into its structure it needs to be, and then come back stronger than ever. Because when the game first came out, it wasn't. A competitive game there was no hcc at the moment mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and then it became something really fast mm-hmm. and it never had the time to really mold and i think the game needed more time to mold and i i think it will come back you know it's gonna it's gonna come back stronger than ever it's like one year off is not gonna you know yeah, the, yeah no, this game is is loved by many there's so much about this game people love you know mm-hmm. we're all sad trust me i'm super sad about what happened and a lot of us are but it's gonna come back and it's gonna be better you know yeah yeah i agree yeah. too mm-hmm. um i think we should get back on track in terms of um what uh the xp change i know so what i what i was thinking about what we were talking with like sylvanas and everything um as as in in terms of not um growing away from the specialist uh um if you're down an XP again, um, and you have that objective, because we, because I know McIntyre was saying that you know objectives win the game now, and so do camps. So is there still that sense of oh we should give the objective a hundred percent so we can soak more, or is that still gonna be a thing, you know, or is it just gonna? It just gonna... depends on where you're at in the game. Yeah. Um, like, if you're down two keep. And the other team's taking the objective, that might not be the look. Like, but if you're drafting for a late game comp, let's say you have a level 10 power spike, it happens a lot. Um, heroes like Zeratul with Void Prison, and you want a team fight at 10, uh, that's your window to kind of turn the game. Then mm-hmm. yeah, giving up a objective for Soak is totally fine in the early game. And you're not gonna just lose. 
Uh, this is, I can reminisce on this right now because I played Tomb of the Spider Queen at BlizzCon against Team Liquid. They drafted an incredibly aggressive early game comp. We responded with Zeratul. Um, in doing so, their comp got so far ahead early that it was just kind of over, right? Um, we, we just couldn't come back. Now, it, it, you know, we, we can get to a state where the zero tool, you know, we can soak out, it's fine, whatever. We're eventually going to get to a point where we win a team fight now, and now we're winning, right? Um, mm -hmm. That still exists. Um, in losing forts, you just kind of put... The best way for me to explain it, really, and and this is really what I would just say about the patch and it's all together, is when you lose a fort, you're on a timer, right? Mm -hmm. um, eventually, you're going to be bombed. So now you have your opportunity, and you need to make something happen. Otherwise, yeah, you're end up that's that's the so, best way to look at it mm -hmm. so oh, are team fights going to be this might be an irrelevant question but are team fights going to be more even now that the specialist like changing changing you know someone like a zagara who's a specialist to an assassin she's already pretty strong enough against enemy heroes Mm -hmm. Changing her to an assassin is that gonna the is that gonna even out the team fights a little bit more? Because if you don't have like a specialist on your team and you have and you all have like assassins, like how is that? How are you going to build your comps now? I, I'm I'm curious because Probius is an assassin, so <laughs> I Let, love you know, you, Does but that the... does that question make sense? I kind of yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. And like I think Vipy's point is you like previous assassin. It's a draft sense where you go, we need an assassin or a range, and they go, I got you. And they pick another Zagara, and the enemy team picks a tracer or something in that sense. You know, you're I get what you're saying is that like they're under the same label, but they don't do the same thing. Yeah. I guess I kinda you know. asked it kind of weird. <laughs> no, 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 I got you. hundred percent. Okay. Like that's that's kind of what I think you're going for, right? Yeah, that... no, I'm saying, Kyberis, I don't know if they're actually changing those heroes. The heroes, I'm saying, like, kind of in theory, know, if they do. I don't know do. if they are. I, I, wish, yeah. I wish that they would. I'll be honest, I wish that they would, because their kids are based around pushing. And, yeah. And if you introduce them into a team, like, even with Zagara, like, I see Zagara's nowadays. Like, if you go Nidus Worm on Zagara, it's not terrible. I'll be honest, it's not terrible. Like, even Vikings. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going down a hole here. So, Vikings is essentially. Zagara on steroids because you can soak XP, right? Mm -hmm. um, really efficiently. Um, so there is a place for specialists, but because I think what Kagiri is suggesting is that team fights are so important and they have to be won in order to win. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Do they buff Vikings? Do they buff Zagara? I'm not sure. I mean, they're, they're really good at what they do. It's just, do they win the game now? Uh, like, Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Because I don't think, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't think there's, um like, a huge, like Max said, I don't think there, if they were to change Zagara, the only thing I would change is Nidus. Like I said, because she's super strong. But, yeah. I don't know. Go ahead, Viper. I, I completely understand what you're saying. I mean, I played Zagara as, uh, she does a lot of damage to heroes, but I get what you're saying. Those little nuances about her kit that just yeah. scream, I push lanes, you yeah. know. Banelings do 300% more damage. Yeah, it's just, oh, that's right. I forgot about that one. They, they're. It's just I interesting how I they're. <laughs> Go it's, ahead. It's it's just interesting how they're how they're labeling it as for for a sense like you know, for me I'm worried like in draft when you say oh we need a tank and someone jokingly picks hammer back in the day now it's oh we need a, a tank but then they pick a quote unquote bruiser or we need an assassin they pick a probius when we don't need that style of an assassin mm -hmm. but it is labeled as that now. Back in yeah. the day, back in the day, a specialist was a hey, you're a specialist. So if we don't need that, we need this. You know, uh, there's a lot more categories, but they're not. It's it's a weird line. I feel like, uh, and not in a bad way, but also not in the best way. They did it I with guess. Sylph. They did it with Sylph pretty good. I, I'd say. Yeah. That, oh no. Like we were just talking about Sylph is yep. kind of a ranged assassin. Mm -hmm. I would have. I would have. Specialist for. I would have loved to have seen them take the specialist and just go with them and just fix what they needed to about them yeah. um like they did with sylph you know i love probius he's one of my favorite heroes to play and i think it's a lot of damage um but like i said some of those some of these heroes don't like have that it was you know like zul was starting to a bruiser category you know which to mm -hmm. me makes sense he's pretty bruiser like 
Um, he has good at sustain if you play him right, but does he fit the role that people are going to ask for when you ask for a Wait, bruising? really? Yeah, yeah. He's he's, a, a... he's on the. I well, didn't know that. Bruisers are, if you have a form of, but what I noticed when I looked through all the uh, heroes that I put there, mm -hmm. if if you are if you have some self sustain of some sort, you or a shielding or anything like that or damage reduction, you are considered a bruiser. That's what he's... it looks like overall. His self sustain can be incredible. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So, okay, I, I guess I could. I, I can definitely see that. And then. he has the built-in. Yeah. He has a built-in shield. One. Type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So huh. I mean, it's 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 interesting how they categorized it, and I would love to have been a fly on the wall to really see what the justifications were for some of them. But like, there are some heroes that just don't fit that exact mold. Just like yet. Vikings, right? Yeah. That's why, yeah. Uh, like what? It, what is Vikings, right? Like. Yep. I think they're considered a utility now, right? But like okay. at the same point, like what is a utility? You know, <laughs> soaking Mur all three lanes. <laughs> yeah, Murky Just actually calm. gets turned into a tank. Murky Bruiser tank. Hey, hey. well, twenty. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Mur Murky's are scary. Know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's the uh, game plan. Yeah. Of Murky Just I'd... play until you hit twenty and then win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think they're cons. I think they're what it's considered a support. Technically, supports are Vikings now, and there's actually a healer category. So. It's I, it's interesting. Support in what way though? Because they're not going to support your it's, health, but they're going to support the game. What? Just that's the all. Game, that's yeah. that's what they consider. A support is more of they support your XP. It's I mean, the it's it. the it's the literal sense of support, not what you think as a video game. You think of it as a support, like a support beam on a house yeah. holds up the wall. It right. keeps you together. Zarya is a support. She keeps your team alive. You know stuff like that. So mm -hmm. now healers actually give you direct health points, where as a support is benefiting your team in a certain lack of advantage you have. If you have a gank team or a four-man rota uh, rotating team, you can get Vikings, and now what you are lacking, you now have. So they're kind right. of they, yeah. I, I mean, like they kind of are like special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, like special. They're like kind of like special. Yeah, we're just gonna cover that up with yeah. support title. Yeah. <laughs> At first, I wasn't yes, uh, sure what he was talking about, but yeah. I was like, "Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it." Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, but, uh, go ahead. Yeah. No, no. Yeah, and that's that's just the mentality of of the role changes, which is still it's 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 more of a direct thing now. So now, I guess when you're in draft or in a sense of a game, you can kind of hone in on what you actually need, but there's still some heroes that just don't fit any mold that they kind of just yeah. found a found a place for them you know are they yeah. just gonna go are they just gonna go crazy and just make a bunch of you know like is that <laughs> you know does is that something that they are it's weird that they introduce something like that right and then mm -hmm. does that just mean like it's go time like we have this thing that's called support like that means we can oh we got a character that you know a peasant and he builds towers everywhere like do they just go crazy on that idea? Like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, oh, he's got a blacksmith. He can upgrade the swords and the minions. Like, or yeah. do they just stay away from that completely? Well, here's my theory crafting uh, in my own mind. When they implemented the uh, Sylvanas changes, I immediately was like, oh, something's coming that we don't know. I think like a hero that's going to benefit from structures like a peon or a peasant or like a hacking sombra kind of style in my opinion that's what i felt because i feel like these changes are clearing the path for new changes or new heroes that will add different diverse uh effects to the game overall so i think these are kind of what we're going for because savannah's being able to lock down all the towers would just just kind of eliminate a new that, advancement that character all yeah exactly so what if knows? you could summon peons to fix your towers I would love it. I, it's it's very possible. I mean, in my opinion, <laughs> like a dead mechanic to the game is Abathur and Mule. Like I, yeah. hate, I absolutely hate it. I think it's horrible, it, it, and it's terrible for the game because mm -hmm. it legitimately discourages you to siege if you're going to fail to siege. Right? Yeah. It, it's a mechanic that literally says if you're going to commit to this fort and you're not going to get it, please do not try. Like if you want to try yeah. to kill our core. You better kill it because if you don't, then you've lost all hope. Like, yep. I, it scares me. If it, it, I think it'd be okay if both teams could do it, but in a current state, and and even then, I don't want that. Like, I, I would actually hate that. But if they were go gonna do it, I think that they would give it to both. Teams, right? I would like to see yeah. them 
bring more of an RTS style to the game, and then you'd be able to upgrade towers. And yeah. You'd be able to <gasps> and you'd be I always. Able to- I- like I always like said that, that you yeah. upgrade your menu. Oh, so then you're I... using resources like that. I think that that yeah. I thought it would be pretty cool if they had a. And this is like we're, we're we're like we're like really going this way. Yeah. But I like I thought it'd be so cool, like with the whole mentality of like the adjutant. Imagine if she was just the core and she was able to bonus with her levels, get your lane yeah. structures, you know, stuff like that. But it's interesting to think of that there's an underlying reason why the XP changes happened and yeah, yeah. the, the laning phases happened more mm-hmm. than anything, you know, That's overall. That, that is, I mean, that is true. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Uh, hopefully, like, like, hopefully there is something that, that is yeah. behind it all. I, I still, go ahead. yeah, I was going to yeah, say outside of, outside of the fact that they don't want teams to just smack, uh, because that's what the game was. I mean, it really was. Like, once you got mm-hmm. behind in structures, you just, yep. like, let's hope that we get a pick now, guys. We're two levels. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. 13-11. Well, we lose this one. 16-14. We lose this one, you know? And then yeah. casually, the game's over. Like, now, that, that, that that's not there as much. But, I mm-hmm. mean, that's cool that you even suggest that. I never even thought that even down that hole. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this, I always, whenever I see anything massive change like this, I always think of why and what other possibilities because in reality the game yeah needed a little bit of a tweak on this on this sense but it th- there always has to be something that is p- paving the road for something else you know there's always a, there's another step to it so who knows like these role changes i thought it would have been hilarious if they would have left multi-class and just put very in there but <laughs> <laughs> you know um it, it's it's a really uh interesting notion but uh i think i saw someone talking about gaslow in chat being being a very viable support i mean eh, he's he's a nuisance um he he does assassin things is he assassin considered i i had it i had it somewhere yeah. isn't he a specialist no but in the new sense I oh what he is in a new sense gotcha i had it somewhere <laughs> you good mac <laughs> is he dying yes, he, is, he is special he is a specialist, but not anymore. Now, <laughs> not anymore. In a world. <laughs> now he's a bruiser melee. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a multi-class. <laughs> what uh, is he? Oh. <laughs> the world may never know. I don't know. Uh, but, but yeah, so it's kind of interesting to think of how they're doing a lot of these role implements, I guess. I guess we're kind of jumping to that topic, I guess, but... Mm-hmm um but yeah no i mean i mean there's definitely it definitely changes things overall yeah i like i said i'm hopeful i'm looking forward to more changes um more heroes different classes i think there's so much that they can add to this game that you know keeps everybody interested and um yeah Mm-hmm. They they've opened the gate for it, right? Um, yeah, they definitely mm-hmm. have. They definitely have. And to be honest, like I've I've been playing Hero League and just picking whatever I want, and it's not terrible. Like before, yeah. I think the flexibility of like, the, like the game was kind of figured out. If that makes sense, it, it, mm-hmm. to, to some extent, it was. I mean, it you know, obviously in competitive, it might be a little more figured out, but. Even then, um, I don't think the game is figured out just in general to the public. So, if anything, I would just suggest everyone just kind of have fun right now. Like it's it's like yeah. wild wild west in the game, and you can kind of mm-hmm. do whatever you want as long as you're playing to win. Um, I don't really think that there's a for sure like best. I don't think that there is do this, do that, do this uh, mm-hmm. that there used to be. Um, yeah, I mean, you can you can literally pick Illidan main tank. And by that, I mean there's no tank on your team, and Illidan runs around in jungles the whole game. Um, yeah. As long as your team supports it and yep. you, you play it correctly. I mean, that's, that's how I look at it. That's the mind-opening thing now. I mean, I, I like playing Samuro, and now I'm seeing a lot more Samuro plays. Um, You can and literally just throw different, your own meta twist on things now. And the same thing going with Sylvanas people aren't adjusting to what is needed now and uh what could the possibilities are people are so used to what used to be instead of 
advancing of what is now going to be something you know which with these role changes i think you're going to open the floodgates to different heroes being played because of the category categories they're being put in and imagine you winning know. a five support game that's hilarious i mean that's literally oh God. hilarious have you have you have you have you nano boosted a white man before? You're she just... will wreck an entire team. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, like just, yeah, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like it's like, but but you can be Vikings too, and you're also support. That that's what I'm saying. That's mm, oh yeah, that's the spice. That's the spice. Oh, the new sense of support. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, was it Olaf tank? OP. Olaf tank OP. If you have a medic yep. and an Ana and a Tas, steam steam. Essentially, but... like four thousand health. Steam you're really drill. you're really pushing Steam those Eric. viking picks <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> please no <laughs> everyone pick vikings uh-huh, they're uh-huh, really uh-huh, good uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah i mean i'm i'm hopeful because what they did with with orphia they had no um you know constraints as um having a bringing in a hero that was previously developed by another blizzard franchise they just put her in there and came up with all of her talents and i think now i am not a pro i am just a casual streamer of here's the storm but i think she is the first hero the mac don't you i, said, I think neither she's am the, i neither am i oh hush. <laughs> i i think she was the first hero that they um that they released that felt really good mechanically and balanced. I was surprised. She's I was surprised. She um easily countered, um, can do a lot of damage, but needs to, you know, make certain plays to do a lot of damage, needs to um actually get in there to utilize her mobility. Her mobility isn't actually um a passive or a trait um so i think I, i'm i'm excited for for what where they're going um with down the road in terms of you know the nexus heroes i would love to see more definitely would love to see oh, more we're talking about I, orphia yeah i i really want to see more i mean when I, like you said i mean she minus the whole uh w chomp factor she came out pretty balanced in a sense uh yeah. when, when, when it came to uh high skill cap and high risk high reward uh factor you know because her mobility people always were harping on no mobility we hate mobility it's too much and they gave us a hero with mobility <laughs> let's go right there uh they gave us mobility but it's a skill capped mobility where you have to hit it to gain it mm-hmm. you know and um, if you miss it you you're you're, you're pretty you're, dead yeah that's, you better it, work it, 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 you better work, all right? Like, cause it, I'm telling you, <laughs> anyone watching, if you want to kill an Orphea and she's having trouble with it, if she misses a Q, guess what you're going to do? Just go. go after her. Yeah. She can't do anything. Or just pick Malganus. Or, actually, you do need to be a little careful, though. <laughs> people, people have gotten really good at just, like, they miss their Q, and they're like, you're going to come at me? And they're like, Whoa. Oh, like, oh, like, you, can't, like, you can't touch here's a, bunch of, here's a bunch of jaws. <laughs> here's a bunch of mouths. <laughs> I don't even have to come to you. You come to me now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean... I, I yeah I favor I like right now I'm playing Q builds because it's fun mm. I like I like I like skill cap stuff but E build is pretty nasty no oh, I love E build oh thank you Blizzard her nobody is amazing nobody expects it it's the new W Chromie oh my god uh, it's you can just... chase you can E build is just one shot people yep oh my god and if you i mean i always love uh what's the what's the talent called uh ancestral strength it's great if you have a, a high amount of of slow silences stuns blah blah, blah. Mm-hmm. but if you're on cursed hollow and those tight corners getting your e to pass through people you will one shot somebody mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and and you will watch that go through and those go where'd all my health go and combo with uh, crushing jaws and a follow-up q that gone you, you know. can even you can even peel with e Mm-hmm. Yep. Like there have been so many times where I've peeled for my team as an Orphea. I can get in there, mm-hmm. throw my E out, and Q out. And then, yep. like, it's like, what? <laughs> what <Yep>. do you want? <laughs> Come at me. Like, I love her. She's amazing. Mm-hmm. And then you have I, 16, and you're, you have the chomp on the tail end of the E, too. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is good I, that they, they – it's good that they balance yeah. that. Like, they added the CD. They share the yeah. CD now. I think that was good, but, like – it yeah, encourages e build even more now, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I mean, personally for me, I, I started just practicing with Q and W. So Q W, then lurking terror at level sixteen, 
kind of has this kind of fun nuance. I like the shared cooldown because instead of making it just a double whammy, it's mm. more of like, a, oh, I don't want to go in there, but I want to use my W. So throw your, your E in and then do it right after. I get the big I get yeah. the big range chomp now instead of yep. the melee chomp. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See, I, yeah, usually, I usually go E with the two Q talents at... 13 16 mm -hmm. yeah 13 and 16 especially if they go you know tank and bruiser mm -hmm. that percentage based damage on that q does so much it just does it's amazing i mm -hmm. i just I can't get no over it. <laughs> what is it determination is just it's just the hot like it's like for me mm -hmm. personally that's what i love taking because i you've been pyroblasted precision striked and you're just like what happened like yeah. it, it's, <laughs> it's insane like you know how much you can do and uh oh, yeah. i was i i think that in inter it's interesting so this is uh another uh opposite opinion 13 talent mm -hmm. passive the little pulse oh i always forget that thing yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> this talent is the hot i'm telling you the pulse it's insane it's like an it's a, 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 a we charge up yeah so your passive becomes uh an activatable right Mm -hmm. yeah it's like, a, it's like a 0. 0.5 0. 0.1 something or like a one second um and it pulses all right and it deals mm -hmm. damage and heals you and then mm -hmm. it stacks your chaos so it gives you passive so for me oh. the talent is like i guess i see it a lot because like i'm playing off lane in the melee heroes mm -hmm. but when i'm diving orpheus mm -hmm. it's something i have to watch out for because if they proc it on me it's like yep. you see heal like you can just kind of die into the other team, and if this thing pulses and hits everything, you just mm -hmm. get a massive heal. Um, yeah, I, it's I, really I think nice. It's it's, yeah. it's 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 underrated. It's very it's very. I know in pro play, a lot of the time people are people mm -hmm. are using that. Um, but I, if you guys haven't tried it, try. It. I, I would suggest to try yeah. it because it's a mm -hmm. ten second cooldown. Ten second. That's pretty. It's, it's pretty much a new spell that you get onto the character. It's, do you it's, do you have do you have uh, that build on Mac? You want to like. That? No, put I it don't. in chat I oh okay sorry right now yeah go ahead go make it because i want i want everybody to play orphea and i want everybody to experience her go ahead viper or um, what it's it's hard right it's difficult <laughs> it's so in, in, my, hard. in my life um, <laughs> oh. but but no i agree because there actually is a time where if i remember i have that new talent uh whenever because it doesn't give you it's it i literally turned your trait into an activate uh so i'll forget it sometimes but you can literally get a q dash forward into a crushing jaws while it's activating and really do some damage and yeah, really yeah. stay a stand up boom one shot yeah it's like think of it as like a delayed calamity in a way but yeah. it heals you you know um it's really cool and as for soul laning she can really powerhouse a solo lane she it's, has it, really good wave clear yeah it's because too. she has she has a sustain it really allows yeah. her to keep that going um yeah. i mean i've soloed a genji <laughs> <laughs> oh it's great i love it's i love it it's amazing i love when um, people i love when people i mean so there's some really good uh zero tools uh mm -hmm. but like i love when it gives they pick a zero tool instantly when they see an orphea they're like oh easy pick and then i'm like okay try me you know uh <laughs> it, you literally have so much sustain with her and you're able to counteract one if you're ready for it if, if yeah. you know if you have an ability up and you're ready to kind of zone him himself you can just destroy Genji or a Zeratul or anyone else kind trying to backline you. She has a good defense against herself yeah. compared to most uh, heroes. You yeah, know, most, ma mo most mages for sure. Like yeah. like a J Jaina versus Zeratul. Like yep. her cooldowns are you know uh, if if they're down, she's kind of useless. Uh, yep. But Orphea can fight back because she's got such a low cooldown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just linked the build in the chat if anyone wants to. There's, yeah, there's, there's there currently could be some uh, yeah. different different opinions on it. Uh, this yeah, is there's what currently I right now. there's currently two possible builds, uh, mine and Max in and yeah. Viper. If you or Vipe, if you want to link yours too, um, those are the mm -hmm. possible builds that uh, we're currently talking about with Orphea. If you guys are willing to play play her, um, we are at one hour and. 30 close to 30 minutes um i don't want to try i don't want to go over two hours um so does anybody in chat have any questions about anything we're talking about about the new xp changes whether we talked about them already or not we would love to answer your questions um this show is for you guys um to help improve your play um help you figure out uh any you know 
um, what, what's, what, ah, I'm losing my word. You're looking you for, if you're stuck and you don't know how to capitalize on certain, um, you know, lane pushing or helping your team, um, ask us, we will tell you, we will provide the best answers that we can give you. Who is Cap the best or top three solo laners right now? Sonia? Uh, Blaze. You no, Blaze is a bruiser now. Y'all huh? can, can say whatever you, you I would actually say Just Orphea. Okay. Uh, I mean, or I think Orp Orphea is pretty good. I think uh, overall, yeah. Blaze still has a place, depending yeah. on the map. I think every solo laner has a map presence. Uh, you have to watch what you pick. Um, I would say Artanis. Artanis has a good place, yeah. Um, but there, it's it's a big flux right now. Actually, what is going to be good? But as uh, for what counters, what's that? Go ahead. You can go ahead, and then I'll. No, I was I was going to jump this, so go ahead. Oh, okay. So mine would be Leoric. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Since you get to the late game, Leoric's really good. He also just smashes waves. He wins pretty much most matchups. Like if the other person takes Blaze, you're going to win that. If the other person takes Alka, you're going to win that. There's a lot mm -hmm. of slow pushing in the off lane. Uh, the second mm -hmm. one I would say would be Dahaka. Dahaka was unchanged, and he's also got a global, which is really good, especially when minions mean so much. So being mm -hmm. able to soak waves uh, and then global in, really powerful. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is Matthew. Uh, I think winning the solo lane is so important right now, and Matthew pretty much beats most heroes in the solo lane. So if you're in the low ranks, I would actually suggest playing Matthew. You will climb tons of ranks, uh, tons mm -hmm. of ranks, because uh, you smash your lane. You only have to be careful about ganks, and in, in a team fight, um, you're, you're pretty effective. I don't know. Those are my things. Uh, as for countering Orphea, okay. uh, my opinion on them, and you guys can put your input in as well. Uh, I think personally, she's countered by blinds, uh, mm -hmm. and, inter and and interrupts. Johanna, yes. Diablo, anyone who can lock her down. Yeah, you don't put her abilities on cooldown, but she has a wind up for all of her abilities. If you cancel that wind up and keep them chain rolling, you know, like any hero, obviously stuns do it, but that really hurts Orphea because she has yeah. to be she has to be mobile and she has to land her abilities to even her. Even like if you pick a Stuko against her, it's mm -hmm. like you 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 silence her. She can't even. Yep, even a bright get away. Yeah, polymorph. Yeah. Yep. You, you can know, literally counters her Nova. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh <laughs> yeah. You just I burst her down. You just yeah, you can kill her so quick and, and you can I, range her. Yeah. All of all of Nova's range is further mm -hmm. than Orphe's range, so I think that that's really <clears throat> Valera. <laughs> <laughs> Valera is actually good versus her, but I don't recommend Valera. <laughs> what's the Cassie asks, what's the best counters for Asmodan? The ban. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> just ban him. <laughs> just ban him. Yeah. yeah, but if if you had an Asmodan on the enemy team, what would be the best best counters? I mean, I I think off lanes are like typically really good. Like the Leork, like I just suggested, the Haka, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like anybody who I, could really like match him in lane. I well, not only that, it's just you need to absorb mm -hmm. what he's doing and then, nullify it. Yeah, and then yeah. and then press into it. So like. Arthas, I mean, if we were to suggest, like, you know, maybe simpler characters, Arthas, Artanis, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, like, Sonya, like, they, they are going to hit, you're going to get hit by it, but then once he throws the Q, that's all he does. Like, that's mm -hmm. all he does. So if you can absorb that and then pressure him, he's mm -hmm. no longer as effective. Mm -hmm. I yeah, I, I really like going against Artanis with an Asmo. It's yeah, it's easy pretty, to swap, right? Like, it's pretty funny. You just mm -hmm. He's really down. easy to swap because he's yeah. He has that huge, huge, I mean, huge hitbox. <laughs> Leo, Leo really stops him in lane for the most part. Once you get Neil, Neil Peasant, yeah. yeah, he has a high health pool and an easy health. hitbox. And you just last rights him. So yep. again, he's just gonna get his Q off. Mm -hmm. I think people have an issue with Asmo because they tend to clump, and then, um, you know, if you, you need to win quick versus him, I guess is my point. Like. If you win quick, if you win within his, I don't know, his Q's cooldowns like 10 seconds, if you can win a fight within 10 seconds, then he's not yep. as effective. But if you let him get a Q off, and then you're fighting, yeah. and then he gets a Q off, then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, snap, we yep. are losing this fight. And I think that's the, yep. the main issue. And you, I think, at the disadvantage to your uh, 
to his his size obviously in in presence <laughs> like with a leo in, in a tomb is heavily easy to get on him yeah, and yeah. can really mess up his own team because mm -hmm. when you see a leo coming at you with a wraith walk or just in general you tend to try and spread away because you know he's going for an entomb or a capitalization of you know march mm -hmm. and for asmo that can be a, a disadvantage to that team so giving him more of that panic that he just can't sit there and just laser or q constantly mm -hmm. Putting that automatic threat on him is Sonya's good. the same thing. I think Sonya, Sonya, you just mm -hmm. run at him, and like yep. he no longer gets to be like, "Oh, let me calculate this." Uh, yeah, that's you know, like mm -hmm. he doesn't get to, he doesn't get the time to <laughs> the space. That's that's why I think bruisers really are are pretty really really good against him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, the new stitches. stitches. Yeah, oh. they yeah. they uh the didn't they nerf topic. his Q or something? It's yeah, like shorter. Yeah, we didn't talk about new stitches. I mean, they did, but it's faster too now. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, he's got like a bunch of stitches. Has like a lot of percent health. Uh, his mm. percent health hook at four does like percent health when he hits it. I mean, mm -hmm. asthma, yeah, it gets hooked really easily. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. I'll be honest, guys. Just don't go gorge, man. Like unless you're really losing, you really like you can hook somebody and then bile, and then it lasts like. 20 seconds and then you just run out you just booga 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 like they can't <laughs> no one can do anything the person that you hooked is just as dead as they would be with gorge if you yep. buy them. like it does it's just and then if you get the new skin it, there's toys popping out everywhere it's crazy like there's toys popping out of everywhere they're literally <laughs> oh just my like gosh <laughs> Totally spitting out of him. I now I now want Stitches to have the ooga booga booga skin. Like, <laughs> just like just... Blizzard, please voice line. <laughs> Hook, ooga booga booga. No, that would that would that would be uh that would be a uh, butcher. He's running after you. Here you go, booga, 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 booga. Booga. No! I guess oh, I say that because if you hooked Asmo and then you gorged him, you would walk him and then he would pop out and then he would slam the ground and then you hopefully kill him. But if you hmm. hook him and then you bile. He's like, oh my god, I'm getting ooga booga, and like that causes a more of a panic, right? That that's gonna cause right. a a response that you want rather than um, mm -hmm. giving him time to set up. Right. Yeah. No, I agree. All right. No well, I think that's that's it. I think that's it for the I first see. episode. Unless you guys have anything else, any any questions, um. I think we're actually going to try to get more questions from the community before uh, next episode. Um, next episode probably won't happen until after Christmas and New Year's. Um, but I definitely thank you guys for for watching, for participating. Thank you, Mac, for coming on the show. I appreciate it. And thank, thank you, Vipey. For being my co-host, uh -huh. <laughs> Mac will be on the three to six block tomorrow for Ready Up. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So tell us where you can, where we can find you, Mac. You know what you're doing now, and and what you're gonna be doing tomorrow. Apparently. So, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> you can find me on uh, Twitter at McIntyre Hots, as well mm -hmm. at YouTube McIntyre Hots. Mm -hmm. On Twitch, it's McIntyre Lol because I'm laughing out loud. Uh, I do stream pretty much every day. Uh, I'm trying to at least. I'm trying to start around noon, one o'clock Eastern time, and then I go into like six, typically seven, and then I usually do a night stream. So I might do a stream after this. We'll see. Um, that's pretty much it. And then at Heroes Heart, it's just McIntyre. There's a new tier list that was just updated pretty recently. Honestly, after the changes. Uh, as well as um, all, all my builds and whatnot. So you can always message me there if you have any questions. But that's it for me. Okay, what about you, Vipey? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Vipey or on all social medias, Vipey underscore afterwards. And uh, you'll find me here as well. Yes. Um, I'm so <laughs> honored to be here, honestly. It was, a, it, was really, it was really awesome. I had a wonderful time. For our first I know. Show. I want to keep talking, but <laughs> we got to save some stuff for the next episode. <laughs> you know us. We can literally sit here all day and just order Chipotle and sit here and just I know. <laughs> like right, right. And it's, yeah. <laughs> well, no. there will definitely be more episodes for all of you guys. Um, we are going to send out some, like I said, um, questionnaires for you guys to to um, 
you know, email us questions, any concerns that you have that you would like us to discuss um, or bring up during each episode. Um, we will have more info coming for you soon about what our next episode will be talking about. Uh, we'll have more guests on um, and Vipy and I will be here as well. So we hope you guys have wonderful holidays, whatever you're doing, please be safe. Um, have a wonderful new year and um, we will see you in, in 2019. The <laughs> well, okay, there you go. Oh, I did my cue. Ready? In the we'll We'll see you in the nexus. In the nexus. <laughs> in the nexus. <laughs> <laughs> and good, have have a good rest of your week, and um, we'll see you soon, guys. <laughs>